Hello! Today we are going to talk about everything about purchase orders in S4 HANA. Okay, this will cover the ECC portion of uh, of, SA, of SAP also. Okay, so let me introduce myself. My name is Arvadeep Kar. Currently, I'm an SAP techno functional architect in an energy industry. I love developing new reusable tools to help business with SAP features used in everyday work activities. I work uh closely with rpa projects also which is the robotic process automation i love to develop programs where production monitoring is minimal and optimizing a web code to add flexibility across sp modules so if i write a simple code where it can be used for sales order uh, report i want to build it for purchase order so if it's something that can be reused i would love to do now i like to automate boring useful work to enlighten the business team a boring useful work can be something related with uh, the business team always does is uh, monitoring idocs okay so every time they uh, they 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 check the idoc data which are in error and accordingly they process it instead of what what i do is if they if they suppose in the uh, idoc they miss the pr okay then what I can do is based on the plant, I can put the PR and in the purchase order, it can be sent out. Okay, something like that. Okay, so previously I used to work at IBM Global Services as an SAP ABAP workflow open text expert. Okay, so that's about me. I love to train and this is my first training with uh, Learn SAP. So in this agenda, we are going to discuss about purchase order flow, transaction codes for purchase order, different operations with SAP purchase order, reporting related to purchase order, and best practice for purchase order processes. Okay, purchase order is is a very if if you are running an SAP environment, ninety percent of the companies will use purchase order unless you have only fi or something 90 percent of the companies that runs on sap uses purchase order recently in the sapphire they told 78 percent of the business transaction world business transaction runs on sap so it's going to go up so purchase order you can find out it's around 72 percent of the world transaction okay so here is a small flow of how purchase order gets created okay so the first thing that is the first thing that happens is this is a, i'm a customer think about i'm a customer and i need a service so i ask for a quotation okay suppose i just give an example suppose i want to buy laptops okay i want to see i ask for quotation from lenovo from dell from hp from apple okay so that's the process where i am asking for a quotation then based on the quotation the the vendor send me some dollar amount some contracts or something and then i have done the vendor selection so once the vendor is selected this thing is done now after the vendor is selected i see suppose i select lenovo because that was part of ibm so i have a soft feeling so if i select lenovo so suppose lenovo sells a laptop the laptops they give it to the office for two thousand dollars well if i'm making a, a big deal with them i want to get it as fifteen hundred dollars so i create a contract with them okay after the contract is created now i want to say okay i need 10 10 laptops okay so for that i need purchase requisition now in contracts the moment you create a contract you can put release strategy at contract release strategy is something where uh, where we can create approvals because suppose i'm the contract creator i may not have the approval to approve a contract it needs to go to my manager or the purchasing manager or the field manager okay so once a contract gets created you can put release strategy and it gets approved it can get rejected also if it gets rejected then you have to give a reason of rejection now after the suppose the contract gets released now i want to do 
the Rio. So now I have a requirement that I will buy 10 laptops. Okay, so 10 laptops. I plan that I want to buy 10 laptops through a purchase acquisition. Again, you can put a release strategy here. Now, this purchase acquisition can be a work order. If you go in the WBS side, it can be a work order also. So here you create a purchase acquisition. Okay, and this again goes for approval. After that, once the purchase acquisition is released, you can create a PO. Okay, now all this skip from the vendor selection to purchase requisition, these things can, the contract piece can be skipped based on the business process. The purchase requisition also can be skipped based on the business process. Now you might say at what place you skip, because sometimes what they do is, uh, suppose Lenovo gives me a catalog where the catalog comes into my system and I just pick the price or approve the price and from the vendor catalog I can buy the laptops purchase order so I don't need these two portion okay so in the purchase order again it goes for release purchase order is a document is a legal document where I am saying that I'm going to create I'm going to pay you okay so generally a purchase order is imagine it's it's the opposite of a sales order okay from the customer side customer gives me a purchase order I'm a vendor I issue a sales order ideally the purchase order is an image of the sales order okay so if you notice here so the blue portion is the portion if that is created from the vendor side the green portion is the portion that is created from the customer side okay so first the sales order gets created okay they creates the purchase order I want 10 laptops then I create they they put 10 laptops now in the purchase order you can put the delivery dates so you might you you can put the scheduling like you want five laptops on this date and another five on some other date in the in the past in the uh, in the future sorry so then based on that they can create based on the scheduling line now sometimes you order something to the customer to the vendor the vendor may not have then they can start negotiating hey i don't have five laptops right away i'll give you three okay so based on that you have to negotiate okay then then once the delivery is created then the shipment is sent and the goods issue is created so the goods issue means imagine i am the vendor i have laptops in my warehouse ready it's a product okay I need to send it to the customer so I need to debit my inventory and send it to you okay so that's what goods issue is so again this is the blue portion then goods receipt is done on the customer side so the laptop came now I need to do a goods receipt that I have received the laptop okay and then after that or before that if it's an EDI invoice the goods receipt is done later because it's an electronic invoice it comes right away so the vendor this this portion can come come at this point also so this this these two columns these two bubbles can flip okay and then once the vendor sends the invoice to the customer the customer verifies whether everything is correct there might be discrepancy on the price there might be discrepancy on the quantity there might be discrepancy on the quality there might be discrepancy on the delivery date because i wanted on 10th and they gave it me at 20th generally if they give it in in uh, earlier there is no discrepancy most of the time they give it in the past when i really don't need it so at this point i can return it or whatever okay then in ideal condition everything is fine the exception is done vendor gets paid based on the counting document so this is the cycle of the whole purchase order flow so remember the the blue ones are the portion where the vendor does this and the green one is the portion where customer does it okay so this describes everything on the purchase order flow